Hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders over $10 and help with the channel at the same time. This week, we've got more new commanders from Dominaria, and I'm playing Evil Adam's Muldrotha deck and keep Sakura Tribe Elder, Llanowar Wastes, Mystic Study, Bayou, Wild Growth, Survival of the Fittest, and Command Tower. Kevin is playing Zedru still, and keeps a hand with Cyclonic Rift, Sacred Foundry, Talisman of Progress, Homeward Path, Prairie Stream, Cascade Bluffs, and Dak Faden. Eric is playing his Jota deck, and keeps a hand with Island, Chase the Mind Sculptor, Temporal Mastery, Polluted Delta, Devastation, Demonic Tutor, and a card that's written in Chinese that I can't read because Eric doesn't listen to my instructions about how to show his hand to the camera. Last but not least, Evil Adam is playing his Derevi deck and keeps in with Command Tower, Martyr's Cause, Counterspell, Sylvan Library, Planes, and Sacred Mesa. I win the die roll and start us off. I play a Bayou and cast Wild Growth on it before passing to Kevin. Kevin plays a Prairie Stream tapped and passes. Eric plays Overgrown Tomb, also having to come in tapped, and passes. Evil Adam plays a Command Tower and passes. I also play a Command Tower, but this time I cast Rhystic Study and I pass to Kevin. Kevin plays a Cascade Bluffs, and casts Talisman of Progress, allowing me to draw. Eric plays a Ferdent Catacomb, cracking it to find a land, and casts Prismatic Omen. He doesn't pay one, and I draw a card. Evil Adam plays an Arid Mesa, that dies to the glare, but allows him to find a land so he can cast Sylvan Library. I draw from it, and in response, Kevin casts Enlightened Tutor, which I somehow forget to draw from. I play a Llanowar Waste, and I cast a Solemn Simulacrum to find a basic. Kevin finally finds Topra Orb with the Tutor, and puts it on top. Kevin plays a Tap Sacred Foundry, and casts Topra Orb, paying one so I can't draw. Eric plays a Polluted Delta, and cracks it to find a land. He announces he'll be paying the one for the Demonic Tutor he's casting as well, and shortcuts to search for the land and a card at the same time. Evil Adam looks at his top three, and pays eight life to draw them from the Sylvan Library trigger. He then plays a Flooded Strand, and cracks it to cast a Revy. I cast a Simic Signet, followed by everyone's favorite card from Kamigawa, Sakura Tribe Elder. I realize I'm pretty much awful with the study, and I pass to Kevin. Kevin plays a Homeward Path, and casts Curse of Opulence on me. He then passes to Eric. Eric plays a Tropical Island, and casts a Crucible of Worlds, which I failed to draw from. Evil Adam uses his Library Trigger, but this time only keeps one extra card, taking four. I then decide to mark down how many times I've missed the Rhystic Study Trigger with a die, because clearly publicly shaming myself is the only way to improve. Evil Adam plays a Plains, and he casts Mana Crypt before dropping True Conviction. Moving to combat, he swings to Revy at me for 4 and gains 4 life, while he and Kevin both gain a gold token. At the end of his turn, I sacrifice the Elder to go and find a forest. Adam also points out that I missed both spells on his turn, and I black out and rage for a minute before starting my turn. During my turn, I cast Vraska the Unseen, which Adam tries to stop with a counterspell. Kevin counters the counterspell with a Force of Will, exiling Paradox Haze and taking 1, making me promise to destroy the True Conviction. I do so, and I then drop Pizarre of Baghdad as my land for turn. I swing Solemn at Eric, and he tells me I missed two more draws, which actually hurts me more than the two damage hurts him. Kevin casts a Chromatic Lantern, and he lets me draw. He then brings out Zedru, and I draw once more. Eric plays an Island, and casts Jace. He uses Brainstorm option to draw three, and puts two back, before casting Expiration. He drops a Blood Crypt as his extra land for turn, and Adam tells me that I've missed two more, and I tell him to stop being so handsome and distracting. Adam rolls for his Mana Crypt trigger, and avoids taking three. He then uses the Library trigger, Adam then plays a Scalding Tarn, and casts Martyr's Cause. He doesn't pay the 1, and I draw a card. He then pays to cast an Academy Rector, and I respond by tapping the Bazaar to draw 2 and discard 3. I pitch Protean Hulk, and Merciless Executioner, and a Fleshbag Marauder. I can't stop it, and Adam grabs an Island from his Tarn, which he sacrificed to help cast the Rector. Moving to combat, he hits me for 2 with Derevi, and he and Kevin gain a gold token. Adam then untaps Derevi with the Derevi trigger, and passes to me. At the end of my turn, I cast Intuition, targeting Eric, finding Caustic Caterpillar, Seal of Primordium, and Spore Frog. Eric gives me the Caustic Caterpillar, and I bin the rest. I play a Marsh Flats, sacrificing it to find an underground sea. I then uptick Frasca, and bring out Muldrotha. With Muldrotha on the field, I cast Spore Frog and Seal of Primordium from my graveyard. Moving to combat, I swing the Solemn at Jace for two, and pass to Kevin. Kevin draws for turn, and moves to combat. He swings Zedru at Jace to finish him off, and pass his turn. Eric untaps, and reveals Temple Mastery off the top, almost as if he knew it was going to be there after brainstorming with Jace. Strange. He casts it, and then brings out Joda. Eric then plays his two fetches from his graveyard as his lands for turn. He cracks them, and grabs a watery grave and a breeding pool, but has them come into play tapped. 
At the end of his first turn, though, I destroy his Crucible of Worlds with the seal. Eric draws for turn, and Adam points out I missed some spells. Eric then casts an Imperial Seal, letting me draw, but Kevin is tired of everyone having a good board state, so he overloads Cyclonic Rift. I draw from this as well, and we all bounce our stuff to our hands. Except for Kevin. Eric then finds the card he wants, and puts it on top, losing two life. Adam plays a Plains, and recasts Mana Crypt. He then brings out his Martyr's Cause, and Academy Rector. Adam passes, and at the end of turn, I use the Bazaar to draw two, and discard three. For my turn, I dredge the life from the loam, and play a swamp in my main phase. I then cast Spore Frog, followed by a Kakusho. I bring out the Caustic Caterpillar to keep everyone honest, and pass to Kevin, discarding down to seven. Kevin responds to the Zedu trigger on his upkeep, paying three to donate Toper Orb to Eric. He then gains one life, and draws a card, before drawing for his turn. He then pays three to cast Dak Faden, and upticks his Walker to draw two, and discard two. He then plays a Misfilled Plains, which comes in tapped, and passes. Eric plays his own Mildrotha in his main phase, and plays a polluted delta from the graveyard. He cracks it to find a land, but shortcuts and casts the Crucible of Worlds before passing to Adam and finding his land. Adam rolls for the Crypt, and doesn't take any damage. He plays a Yavimaya Coast, and taps it taking one to recast Sylvan Library. He then brings back out Derevi, and then casts Sacred Mesa. Moving to combat, Adam swings the Rector at Eric for one. Adam untaps the Rector with a Derevi trigger, and passes. At the end of his turn, I activate the Bazaar once more, drawing two and pitching three. For my turn, I recast Muldrotha in my main phase, and I play a Polluted Delta, basically copying Eric. I then recast Wild Growth onto the Bayou, and then crack the Delta taking one to find a Watering Grave, taking another two. Moving to combat, I swing Kakusho at Kevin for five. I then cast a Simic Signet, and pay one to activate the Signet. I use this mana to cast Phantasmal Image, having it come in as a copy of Kakusho. I let the clone die, and drain everyone for 5 while gaining 15. Kevin gains 1 life, and draws 1 card from the Zedru trigger. He then casts a Tithe in his main phase to find Tundra and Plateau. Kevin then plays a Tundra, and he steals Eric's Crucible of Worlds with Dak Faden. Kevin then moves to cast Aura of Silence, but Adam counters it with a Swan Song. Kevin then casts Solemnity, and at the end of Kevin's turn, Adam sacrifices the Rector to Martyr's Cause to go and find an enchantment. He grabs Awakening, and we move to Eric's turn. We all untap on Eric's untap step, and Eric draws for turn. He then casts Urza's Ruinous Blast, and I kind of wish Adam hadn't blown that swan song on the Aura of Silence. Adam has no response, so I take the lead and sacrifice the Spore Frog to fog combat damage. I then pay 2 to sacrifice the Caustic Caterpillar to destroy my own Simic Signet. We then exile all non-legendary, non-land permanents. Eric then replays his Polluted Delta, and recast Jace. He uses Jace's zero ability, and cracks the delta to find land, shuffle away the two cards he puts back. Eric then recasts Exploration, and plays a Marsh Flats before passing to Adam. On Adam's upkeep, Eric sacrifices his Marsh Flats, and Adam then casts Squirrel's Nest in his main phase, taking one from the Yavimaya Coast. At the end of Adam's turn, I use the Bazaar once more. I play Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth, and I then cast from my graveyard Seal of Primordium, and Simic Signet. I then move to combat, swinging Kakusho at Jace, and Mordrotha at Kevin. In my second main phase, I recast the Phantasmal Image from my graveyard, having it come in once more as Kakusho. It dies immediately, and drains the table for 5, and I gain 15. Kevin draws, in his own words, garbage, and upticks Dak to draw 2, and discard 2. He then casts Clever Impersonator, having it come into play as a copy of Mordrotha. There are now 3 on the table. He then plays a Plains from his graveyard, and casts Detention Sphere, exiling his Muldrotha, my Muldrotha, which I have go to the command zone, and Eric's Muldrotha. Kevin then passes turn. Eric pays 4, and casts Jota from his hand. Adam counters it with a Wizard's Retort, and Eric then casts a Soul Ring, before recasting Jota once more. He then casts a Sylvan Library, and passes. At the end of Eric's turn, Adam makes a Squirrel. Adam draws for turn, and heads to his combat step. He swings a Squirrel at me, and Derevi at Kevin. Adam puts both untapped triggers on the planes of the Squirrel Nest, and makes two Squirrels. He then passes to me. For my turn, I cast a Seder Wayfinder, and I take a Forest and bin the rest. I then recast Muldrotha, and cast a Gilded Drake from my graveyard. I swap it with Eric's Jota, and feel pretty good about myself for doing so. Moving to combat, I swing Kakusho at Adam for five. Kevin responds to the Zedru trigger, and donates away the Detention Sphere to Adam. He gains one life, and draws a card before drawing for turn. Kevin then plays a Plateau, and upticks Dak, drawing two, and discarding two. Kevin ditches Greater Oromancy, and Sphere of Safety. Kevin then casts his own copy of Rhystic Study, and I suggest he try not to follow my example when it comes to the enchantment. Eric uses his Library Trigger, and puts out a Bloodstained Mire for his land for turn. He cracks the Mire to find a Sacred Foundry, taking two more. 
He then pays to cast Rise of the Dark Realms, getting a bunch of creatures from me and nothing else from Kevin or Adam. Eric then resolves the Solemn ability first and finds a basic. He returns the Rise with Eternal Witness trigger, draws a card from the Baleful Strix, and then we resolve the Executioner and Fleshbag triggers. Eric sacrifices the Protean Hulk and the Baleful Strix, while Adam kills Derevi and a Squirrel. Kevin sacrifices only Zedru, and I let Kakusho and the Seder Wayfinder die, draining everyone for 5 and gaining another 15. Eric has the Phantasmal Image come as a copy of Joda, and he then plays a second land for turn, a Windswept Heath, and cracks it to go and find Godless Shrine, taking another 2. He then activates Joda's ability, paying 1 of each to cast Avacyn, Angel of Hope. Eric then resolves a Protean Hulk trigger because he had a lot going on, and finds only Joyra, Weatherlight Captain, as that's the only remaining creature that meets the criteria for the Hulk trigger in his deck. Eric then swings a Gilded Drake at Dak to keep him away from his ultimate, and at the end of turn, Adam makes a Squirrel, brings in Derevi, untaps the Squirrel land, and makes another Squirrel. Adam plays a High Market for his land for turn, and pays 8 mana to cast a Wargate, where X is 5. He swings everything at me, and I just take it. Using his untapped triggers, Adam stacks him on the Squirrel's Nest, Plains, and makes another 6 Squirrels. Kevin realizes he missed the draw trigger from the Wargate, and puts a Dice of Shame on his study. For my turn, I cast Dance of the Dead from my graveyard, paying the one extra for Kevin's study. I bring back out Kakusho with the enchantment, and then bring out Survival of the Fittest, paying the one extra. I tap the Lanoar Wastes, taking one to discard Birds of Paradise to go and find Hostage Taker. I then cast Hostage Taker, and pay the extra one, allowing Kevin to draw. I target Eric's image with the Hostage Taker trigger, forcing him to sacrifice it. I then tap the Bazaar for one black to activate the Simic Signet, and cast the image from my graveyard. I don't pay the extra 1, and Kevin draws. I have it come in as Kakusho again, sacrificing it to the legendary rule, and draining everyone for 5 and gaining 15. Moving to combat, I take Kevin out of the game. Eric looks at my graveyard before starting his turn, and he recasts Rise of the Dark Realms again. He draws from the Baleful Strix, and mills 4 with the Wayfinder, keeping the steam vents. He has the image come in as Kakusho, and the rest of the creatures hit the field, even if it does spill over to Fred 2's playmat. Eric then casts Chrome Mox, imprinting nothing to draw from the Joyra trigger. He then plays a Taiga as his land for turn. Eric then casts Toretti, drawing from Joyra. He drops an Instarian Bridge, and I have to wonder why everyone in Montreal seems to be playing this card now. Eric then upticks Toretti, pitching 2 and drawing 2. He then casts a Sensei's Divining Top, drawing from the Joyra, and passes. At the end of Eric's turn, Adam sacrifices Derevi to gain another life from the High Market, and makes another Squirrel. Evil Adam plays a Gaia's Cradle in his main phase, and taps the Cradle to float a ton of green mana. Adam then casts Gilded Drake, trying to steal my Kakusho, and I realize I can win the game by sacrificing the seal to kill Adam and Eric in one fell swoop. Game review time. So it definitely seems like if you're able to keep out any of the commanders from Dominaria, you're going to do very well. I can only imagine that if Eric had full control of Jota for most of this game, we would have seen a lot more spells for a lot less mana. Unlike the previous game where Evil Adam was playing Muldratha, I was able to keep my commander out for most of the game. Having basically a Crucible of Worlds in my command zone is a fantastic effect, and being able to recur things easily after a board wipe or destruction spell made it super easy to recover later in the game. I did win through a bit of a cheesy combo with the Phantasmal Image in Kakusho, but this was one of the earlier iterations of Adam's deck, so he's since improved it and made it more different. Unfortunately for Kevin, when he typically plays my Zezru deck, it goes a lot better than it did this game. He unfortunately didn't draw very well, and found very few ramp spells. This forced him to play defensively, and he was never really able to establish a board state for himself. Evil Adam's Derevi deck didn't seem that oppressive this game, and we were able to basically keep him under control for the most part. Torpor Orb really shuts him down, and it prevents him from basically abusing Derevi and getting the untaps when it comes into play. Couple that with the fact that we were able to remove True Conviction and Awakening, two great spells that he loves to use to untap his stuff, and he basically played just a fair Derevi deck. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at Twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.